Jeez Louise. Jeez Rick. Oh jeez Rick. This is really, really difficult to get into. So today we have a very special car. We are driving a 2018 Lotus Evora 400. Yeah, this is so. This is the fastest thing we've driven yet. So far. So far for the show. Yeah, for the show. I, I think when people see this, they think supercar. Yeah, definitely. And I don't. I don't know if I'd actually classify this as a supercar. I don't think it is. It's got one. It's got normal doors. They don't go up. Yeah, normal doors, not um, supercar doors. It has a cup holder. It has one, one single cup holder. one single cup holder in the whole vehicle, and it's so hard to reach. <laughs> like I was like, it's I like can't if reach you're it from driving, here. you have to like. I'd like do this to get to it. It's so bizarre. It was an afterthought. Yeah, definitely. But it's not meant for uh, grand touring or being uh, comfortable. No. It's meant to go very fast oh. like this and uh, just have a fun time with a smile on your face while you're driving. Yeah, you don't need to be slurping chili in this car. No. A Wendy's small cup of chili. All right. Three, two, one. Oh. And six there. Ooh. Dude, we were barely even down the strip. I know. And we were at 60. Man, you feel it in this one. More than yeah. any car we've driven so far. Wow, man. This, man. the Viper had 400 horsepower in a V10. Yeah. This has 400 horsepower in a V6. Yeah, that's, that that's just a big goes difference. to show what modern technology in a smaller car can do for you. Yeah. So this car is priced at $106,000. Pretty steep. That's pretty steep, but this has like all the bells and whistles and options and stuff. All right, so what kind of bells and whistles are we talking about? On this, um, the carbon fiber black package exterior. I do love that look. Yes, but that's like an additional $5,000, yeah. I think. Well, um, when you get up into that kind of price territory, what's another $5,000? That's true. Let's start with the front of the car. This yeah. thing is beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. It's uh, I love the yellow color. The yellow is my uh, my favorite look on the Avora line. I'm I like pretty the sure. yellow and I like the orange too. Or we've got those giant air intakes on the sides. Yes. I love those. I do love that. I love how that looks. I think it's really cool looking. Yeah, you can see it out in your in your mirrors. And it seems actually functional too. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it leads right back into the engine compartment. I know from uh, watching a video that Doug DeMiro made on the Lotus Evora that you can open the front compartment uh -huh. and put some stuff in it. But I'm pretty sure he reviewed an older model because I can't find the lever he was talking about. There's like nothing here. So I don't know how to open it, I guess. Because I don't see shit. How am I supposed to test if I can fit in the frunk if we can't open it? Oh man, you could barely fit your hand in the frunk. That's ridiculous. It's based on his video. Like, <laughs> I don't know how you could do it. Yeah, the storage on this car is not very great. It's terrible. Yeah. You have that tiny compartment in the front. Yep. You have a trunk which can fit maybe two grocery bags. Yeah, it's very small. You can't really fit a lot in it. And it, got, it gets warm back there because that's where the engine is. Right. And just so, mounted in the back. Can't really store a lot, and you do have back seats. This is technically a four-seater car. Ah, uh, yes. As stupid as that sounds and how small this looks, you have four seats. But these back seats are the biggest joke. It's, uh, it's tight. It feels like more of a bench yeah. than a... Uh, than actual seats, I and feel like. They stuck those in there for what purpose exactly? You told me this the other day. You know, I would think that um, it was maybe one of two reasons, and I don't know if this is a rumor or not, but maybe for insurance purposes. Yeah. Because you can go to an insurance company and say, hey, this is a four-seater car. I don't know if that's really true or not, but what I do think it maybe is there for is for people who want to buy this and their spouse <laughs> disagrees with it. Yeah. And so then they can justify to their spouse and say, well, look, Look, honey, we can fit the kids. Yeah, this is a four-seater car. This is practical. <laughs> this passenger has no mirror. Driver's side has no mirror either. These are very, and they don't want to come down either. Yeah, they're really hard. This, I believe, is useless. I yeah. don't think that actually, that doesn't block any of the windshield. No, you're right. That's this is so funny. really, really dumb. They just put this here because legally they have to. Yeah, they've got feel the warnings. Like. 
yeah, the interior in this is not bad, but it's not as good as a 911. It's not as good as a Cayman or a Boxster even, which are less expensive, I would say. All that aside, do you really need a super luxurious interior in what amounts to a race car? Yeah, no, I don't think you do. No. Um, maybe if you're wanting to do some grand touring and you're wanting to like travel and drive it long distances, yeah, this really isn't that comfortable for that. I wouldn't recommend that. I would agree. But I mean, just looking at it, it looks nice. Leather wrapped uh, dash. It's got a leather steering wheel. Very small, yeah. sporty steering wheel. Yeah, this is the best feeling shifter I've ever felt. Very it notchy. Is, it's so notchy. It's so mechanical and smooth feeling. It, yeah. It just like glides while you're And you're never it. unsure that you're in gear, unlike yes. some cars. This one, it clicks into each it's, position. It's really, really precise feeling. It's very satisfying. I yes. like that. This is a mid-engine car. Um, so the engine's like right behind you. You can always hear it yeah. like booming behind you. Yeah, 3.5 um, liter V6. Yes, and funny enough, it's a Toyota Camry engine. I love that. When have you ever heard a Toyota Camry that sounds like this? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, if Camry <laughs> sounded like that, I'd be driving a Camry. Yeah, when have you ever heard a Toyota Camry with that kind of noise? Yeah, I love that. Whatever witchcraft they do to it over at Lotus, they do a good job. Looking at all the, the dials and stuff, you've got these actual nice physical mm -hmm. dials. I prefer the physical buttons, I think, to the touch buttons that we see on a lot of yeah. more recent cars. And this, like the um, the radio, um, we were told is a, just a stock basic radio. Lotus actually didn't design this radio. They have to sometimes rely on other companies to help build other parts for them or just get other parts for their cars. Yeah, and some purists will be like, you know what, it's not it's not made all in-house, it's, it's trash. It's a cheap car. It's not a cheap car. This is this is still yeah. handmade. I mean, look, there's a little yeah, there's badge a logo over there. here. It says "Hand Built in England by David Hills." I love that. That's I think that's so cool that they, they they care enough about their craftsmanship to sign it and display it prominently in the cabin. Yeah, it is really nice that they do that. I hope that David Hills is watching this video. David Hills, you're right the man. now. We're driving your car, David. Excellent work, David. <laughs> we'll pick you up sometime. Okay, so here's something that's gonna be funny. We're coming up to a stop sign right now. I'm gonna be revving it in sport mode, but there's three different modes in this car. There's normal, and there's sport mode, which we've been in this whole time, and there's race mode. So let me rev the engine up, and I'm gonna take it off sport. It quieted down. It quiets down a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and then when you put it back in sport, <laughs> you hear it. It like, gets more it gets obnoxious. More, yeah, it gets more loud and obnoxious. So uh, when you put this in race mode, um, that's like the other third mode. And uh, I was advised not to turn that mode on unless we were at a racetrack, which we're not going to do. Sense. Uh, makes sense, race, racetrack. But basically, that just completely takes the traction control off I love it. of the car. So you can do like some sweet burnouts and like, that's what I'm looking for. What, drift? Drift, yeah. <laughs> On conventional roads, I'm not yeah. comfortable enough to uh, take it off that. Yeah, leave that for, for track days. Yeah. Lotus, if you're watching, hook your boys up with the track day. I have a couple of gripes with the back. What are um, your gripes? I'm not a huge fan of the of the of the 400 branding on the back. Really? The Avora 400. Yeah. Really? I kind of like it. For whatever reason, I expected that to be like a typical emblem. Yeah. Like like a metal emblem, but it, it's part of the paint. It's painted on there. Oh, really? Yeah. I actually haven't noticed it, that. It looks like it. It could be a decal that they put on, but it looks like it's part of the paint. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a little obtrusive on the back of the car. It's a little, yeah. Whereas on Porsches, it's I notice it's like actual like metal. Yeah. It's like separate. Yeah. It's like bolted on. Yeah, that's that's one of my few gripes with the back. Also, the exhaust tip, I'm not a huge fan of the single giant exhaust. I would agree tip. with that. I would think it would look cooler if there was like multiple exhaust. Yeah, give, pipes. give a dual exhaust or, yeah. or or a quad exhaust, something like that. I think that's really impressive. Like the back of the Corvettes, they look really good. Yeah, I would um, agree with that actually. Oh, we got a big dip coming up. Yeah, this is, um... Here we go. 
a little nerve wracking here, honestly. This is so low, it's really easy to scrape. Yeah. Um, the front, the tail, I mean, the nose, not the tail. Yeah. It's really easy to scrape the front uh, when you're going over bumps or Yeah, road you gotta blocks. take speed bumps and dips at an angle. Yeah, definitely. Otherwise you're gonna lose your very expensive front end. Yeah, that would not be good. No. Joe's got a good story about scraping something, don't you, boy? Oh man, yeah. I used to be a valet attendant uh, for three years actually and i drove a lamborghini gallardo and i uh, scraped the rim <laughs> driving it i uh, i parked it in a parking spot and i just scraped the whole rim oh, alongside man. the curb i can't even imagine what that was like yeah i cried <laughs> i believe it i'm not even kidding reversing is uh, so you pull up on that thing just like the jeep yeah it is just like my jeep all right annoying beep and since you can't see out the back of this like at all. It's very necessary that this has a backup camera. Yeah, cause like if you were to back up conventionally by looking out the back window, you can't. Yeah, it's impossible. I mean like you can kind of see a little bit out the back, but you just see like little like, it's like slivers. Yeah, you see slots. I, can, I couldn't tell if there's a car behind me. But looking at the screen here, it's got these cheesy little cones. Yeah. It's funny. Attack! Oh, oh. It's e I feel like it's easy to see stuff, actually, because yeah. you are so low. You can see under stuff easily. Okay, yeah, you can see <laughs> under stuff. Seeing over stuff, okay, yes, that's true. Seeing over things um, is hard. I feel like you could get by and get in somebody's blind spot really easily oh, yeah, in this. For sure. It's pretty small. Speaking of blind spots, <laughs> this car is all blind spots. When you're driving, looking out of the right is almost impossible. Yeah. Like, when you're turning anywhere to your right, um, you need to have somebody in the passenger seat, I feel like, to uh, look over and help You're good. you. Yeah, you can let me know. Yeah. But it corners well. I it mean, does. like, it grips well, too. Like, it really grips the road very, very well. I never feel like it's going to lose traction and go careening off and kill me. Yeah. While I driving. Thought, I thought getting into this for the first time that this was going to be an ordeal to drive. I thought it was going to be, oh, boy, it's a supercar. It requires all of this, like, constant vigilance not yeah, to throw you off the road. But it's, it's not. Yeah, it's not that bad, it's honestly. It's really not. I've been enjoying this. I've just been kind of cruising around. I, I can. It's got power when yeah. we need it. It can be a cruiser. Yeah. Like, you can use this as a cruiser. Sir. Having driven a 911, having driven Caymans and Boxsters, and a lot of other cars that are similar priced to this, I think this is the best car that's under six figures that I, you can buy. I might agree with that. My my driving experience is more limited than yours when it comes to super expensive or sporty cars. Just because I was a valet. Just because you're a valet. For so yeah. long. But this car, it never once felt like it was going to kill me. Like it, it sticks to the road well. It's it's got enough power yeah. to get out of its own way. At fast speeds, don't seem fast in this. No. Like when you're on the freeway going 80, you feel like you're going 50. Yeah. I feel like. I mean, I, I think I've said this a lot, honestly, in videos. That, like this car gives me the most smiles. Yeah. Of any car I've ever driven. It's gonna blah, be every blah, blah. episode. It's gonna be every episode of where I'm, if we're gonna drive something new that I'm gonna like more. Yeah. But I'm gonna say it again. This gives me more <laughs> smiles than uh, anything we've driven so far. Well, it is freezing. It's We're gonna knock so this out. It's so cold. We're gonna go through this real quick lock. Performance. Yeah, performance. I don't know, it's fast. Like It uh, could be faster. It could be faster, there's faster cars. It's, it's still a heck of a lot of fun. Zero to 60 is four seconds. It's fun. It corners fast. You know what? Seven and a half. Se I was going to say the same thing. There we actually. go. Seven point five. Seven, seven and a half. Yeah. Awesome. Practicality. Two. Yep. <laughs> Two. That was quick. Yeah. That, mostly that was super, mostly because the trunk. Trunk is non-existent. Trunk is tiny. It's almost not even less existent. It's got a very tiny cup holder that you can't reach. It has one single cup holder that's very difficult to reach. Premium gas does have good gas mileage, but it's still but premium. But that's it. That's the only reason I'm not giving it a one, is the good gas yeah, mileage. Yeah, it does have good gas mileage. I'll give it that. Two. Value. $100,000. I'd say the value is actually pretty decent. I mean, like, you get for a what it looks car. like and the performance, and again, what we said in the car, how I think this is the best performance car under $100,000 yeah. on the market. I'd give the value a six. six. And that sounds bad, but it's mostly because we don't really know what the long-term reliability True. of this is going to be like. It is a British car. It's a Toyota engine, though. It's a Toyota engine, but it's British electronics Yeah. and the rest of the car. So I'd give it a six because I'm not really certain. I have a hard time giving really expensive cars a high value rating. Just to hedge my bets, I'm going to say 5.5, which is still above average. All right. But 
not great. Wow, we've been like pretty much tied yeah. on everything. Cool factor, I think we're still we're gonna agree on that too. I'm gonna give it a nine. I'd also go with a nine on cool factor. It's it gets more attention than anything I've ever driven in my life. More like serious, sustained attention. Yeah, like a lot of attention. And like it just looks dope. I mean like everyone that looks at this thinks it's cool. Oh yeah, everybody. Quality. Quality is um quality's a little tough. The interior Quality is lacking in compared to rivals, like yeah. especially compared to Porsche or Audi. Yeah. I'd also honestly go with the six. Six. Probably for quality, yeah. I'm gonna give it a little bit higher. I'll give it a six and a half because I do like the seats. They're not junk. The I, seats are good. The leather, true. I mean the, the dash is leather wrapped. They it hug, looks nice. They hug you in pretty well. At Even least. if it doesn't yeah. survive more than a decade, it's still it looks nice now. Yeah, I'd agree. Fun factor. I'll go first this time. This one's interesting because like we were driving it, it's a lot of fun. But I also, I found myself kind of relaxing Yeah. At a, after a while. So yeah, I was just kind of cruising around. So it's yeah. not 100% all thrills like something like the slingshot is. Because True. that's all the slingshot yeah, you're right. can the do. The slingshot is literally a toy. 100% of the time, it's a toy. Yep. This is mostly a toy. It's mostly a toy, but you can drive but it like a normal car. You can be normal-ish driving Ish. Yeah, it. that's the key. Yeah. So I'm going to give this... I'm gonna give this a seven and a half. I'm gonna go just slightly higher. I'm gonna go with an eight. All right. On the fun factor. Uh, let's add this up, do some quick maths, and see what comes quick out. Quick math. Let's see what we got. Okay, and the average is. Ooh. Oh man. Ooh. I can't wait. You know what this is? Where does it put? Where does it go? It's gonna be the best car we've All driven right. thus far. But that's not surprising, considering... Oh, oh, oh you lost them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, that's not surprising, considering this is the most expensive car we've driven so far. This is the most expensive car we've tested. So I feel like it should be the best yeah. that we've driven so far. I'd agree with that. I mean, this is, I think, as a complete package, this is the best car we've driven so far. Right. All right, so 38.25 is the score for the Lotus Evora 400. I think it's probably worth that. Stay tuned for I the next so episode where hopefully we can even get something a little bit better. Uh, if you liked the episode, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that little notification bell to make sure you get all of our videos. And we will see you in the next episode. There's one thing I know, it's cars. You know who else knows a lot about cars? Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have over 2,400 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month, and as a special offer just for Grand Test Auto fans, you can get your first month free by following the link below. Curiosity Stream is available on just about every platform, so you'll always have access to the best nonfiction content. Sign up for your free trial by visiting curiositystream.com/gta.